can, I know it's hard to convey tone through uh, text messages and, and, and uh, electronic messages, but did you get a sense of like what he is, what he's about, certain things that, that makes him feel a certain type of way? Yes, a little bit, right? I have a, a faint idea of what he's like because I experience, um, I kind of relate to him when I, went, when I was undercover. Paranoia, but not in a negative way. Careful. Careful. Very careful. Very on point. Um, so he's still very sharp at his age. Yes. Yes. Very careful. Very that's, on point. That's a lot what I'm so, kind of getting. Yeah. So it's like, even for me, when I when I, another cop comes up to me, but hey, how you doing? Blah. Like a person I don't know. I'd be like, who are you? You know, like, what do you want? What's yeah. your angle? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or when random people add me online, same thing. Who do we know? That friends in common, who are you? The street some, smart kicks in. Right. So some sometimes I, I'll call my friends up like, yo, what's up with this kid? What's up with this person? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's cool. He's so-and-so. Okay, cool. I'll add him. All right. Mm-hmm. Strange times we live in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's sad that he has to live like that, right? Even to this day. Like, what is it? Like 40 years later? 50 years later, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He still has to live like that because they're still constantly trying to retaliate against him. Lucky Boys Podcast. But Al Pacino starred as uh, Frank Serpico. Yep, yep. And uh, they made a movie out of it, and that was one of his key roles. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have Steve Lee here, who is known as the Asian Serpico. The reason why they gave me that nickname was um, during the investigation, during when I was undercover, they said this is like... Um, as big as the Nap Commission, which is what Frank Serpico um, accomplished, mm-hmm. and um, they're like, this is like the, you know, like Asian Serpico. So it, it stuck with me from there. I actually speak to Frank Serpico regularly on Twitter DMs. We exchange messages, and oh. he, he actually contacts me like sometimes, just asking me about, hey, what's up with this guy or what's up with that guy? And I, and I give my opinion and, you know, we talk back and forth, you know, he's a very isolated person upstate and he likes his privacy. Um, and what yeah. is he like? 80 mid eighties now? 83, 84. Yeah. He's gotta be. Yeah. He's up there. How did that relationship well, still, like he, develop? How did it develop? It's like, I saw um, you in a newspaper. I love what you're doing. <laughs> no, no, no. So what happened was, um, it developed on Twitter, right? Obviously. And I was tweeting something. Somebody tagged me. I think it was a um, lamp lighter project. They tagged me and promoted my story. And then Frank Serpico, I guess he was just getting into Twitter at the time. And he was working with the lamp lighter project. Mm-hmm. And he, rep- he retweeted it. Oh. So then the lamp lighter project um, reached out and said, hey, look. D Frank Serpico just retweeted your thing. That must have been yeah. surreal for him. Yeah. Wow. So I was like, whoa, this guy is still alive? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's, that's beautiful. Like, so I said, thank you for retweeting my stuff and whatever. Yeah. And then, um, you know, at first we didn't exchange, like I try to call him whatever or, or not call him, but I try to um, tag him. He won't respond or anything. Mm-hmm. But then as he saw my, my stuff progress, and so that I'm continuing to fight the system, um, he started responding, right? Because he doesn't just talk to anybody. Because right. a lot of people try to get to him to use him as a uh, co-sponsor or like take a picture with him, be like, hey, I'm Frank Serpico. Uh, and then he he's very careful who he endorses because he doesn't want to endorse the wrong person. He knows about the systematic racism that goes on in the system. Mm-hmm. He knows about how the system is corrupt and and broken. And he's very actively still fighting that. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he actually still goes to like conferences and stuff like that and does interviews and stuff. And he's still actively fighting it, right? <clears throat> so during my election... What got us like really started talking was during my election, you know, um, Ron Kim started attacking me and doxing me online. And I show Frank Serpico that, right? And because people were saying I'm a dirty, corrupt cop, I'm racist. 
based on only because I'm a cop and I'm running against Ron Kim. Mm-hmm. So they just well, moved. people as in Ron Kim's people, Ron Kim's or people. just general people. No, Ron Kim's people. Okay, right. And they didn't they didn't present any facts. Mm-hmm. They just twisted stuff around. Um, and so Frank Serpico tweeted out, "When you fight corruption in NYPD, like Stephen and I had done." You become the target, right? Mm-hmm. And so forth and so on. We need good people like you in office, you know, Steve Lee, good luck, right? And stuff like Whoa. that. So it was a big endorsement for me. I was like, wow, yeah. that's great because a lot of politicians were endorsing me and stuff like that. He was spreading. Um, you were the new kid on the block. Right. I'm the new kid on the block. Um, he's the eight year incumbent that went unchallenged. Right. And he was spreading rumors to everybody saying that I'm a dirty, corrupt cop and that he has evidence on me, right, dirt on me, and not to endorse me because it would dirty them too if they get involved. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these politicians didn't want to get involved, right? The only person that did get involved was Donovan Richards because he believed in me. He saw what I did and he knows that I did the right thing. So who's Donovan Richards? He's now Queensboro president. <clears throat> oh. So he, was, he is city council for Rockaways. He's also on the chairman of the public safety board that has a say with NYPD and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he ran for Queensboro president at the time. His race and my race were going at the same time. So he co-endorsed me and I endorsed him mm-hmm. and he won that race. And hopefully he wins again in, in the general election and becomes um, Queensboro president. He does great work. Like he's actually out there in the community every day. Very active. Yeah. Very active. Very grounded. Even now during these times? Yes. That's even, incredible. Even now. like you That's know, incredible. He still hangs out with the people that he began with, the people that he grew up with in the neighborhood. That's very important. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, he's still absolutely. going to the barbecues and stuff like that. You Ooh. know, like they're still hanging out. It's wow. not like he gets on his high chair and boom, he's gone, you know? But he's still out there. So that's the reason so why grounded. I like them. He's humble. Right. So you guys immediately hit it off because you guys could see you guys have a lot in common. Right. Right. So... Yeah, so that's that's how me and Frank started um, talking, and during that time, like you know, he he would, he would send me a DM, and I was surprised. I was like, "Whoa, he's sending me a DM!" <laughs> Man, you know? Frank Serbico DMing you, right, oh, dude, right? Because I was like, "Oh, you know, can you come down, or can we take pictures, or can we interview you, you know, as an endorsement type of thing?" So he didn't really answer to that, right? So then one time, I think his cell phone was running out of minutes or whatever, because he has a prepaid, mm-hmm. right? And he was like, you know, just email me because I don't really check my Twitter. My thing is down. I, I'm not in a rush to go out and get another card. So, you know, email me. So he gave me his email. And then, you know, I sent him the dirt on what I had on Ron Kim with facts, actual proof. Right. Right. So we sent that to him. And then, you know, he looked it over. And that's when we he realized, yo, you're really fighting a corrupt guy. You, you know, I'm going to help you. Frank Sarpico yeah. said that. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's like, you know, we, we, we exchange uh, DMs and, you know, we just tweet. We just message back casually. It's, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I'm walking with my wife in the middle. Like he goes to sleep like around 10 o'clock p.m. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'm walking with my wife like around nine or whatever. He'll be like, hey, what's up? Blah, blah. You know, what do you think about this guy? And I'm like, oh, I don't really know that guy. But, you know, from what I heard is this, that and dirt, you know, so forth and so on. So he's right. like, okay, I know it's hard to convey tone through uh, text messages and, and, and uh, electronic messages, but did you get a sense of like what he is, what he's about, certain things that, that makes him feel a certain type of way? Yes, a little bit, right? I have a, a faint idea of what he's like because I experience, um, I kind of relate to him when I, went, when I was undercover. Paranoia, but not in a negative way. Careful. Careful. Very careful. Very on point. Um, so he's still very sharp at his age. Yes. Yes. Very careful. Very that's, on point. That's a lot what I'm kind of getting. Yeah. So it's like, even for me, when I when I, another cop comes up to me, but hey, how you doing? Blah. Like a person I don't know. I'll be like, who are you? You know, like, what do you want? What's yeah. your angle? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or when random people add me online, same thing. Who do we know? That friends in common, who are you? The street some, smart kicks in. Right. So some sometimes I'll call my friends up like, yo, what's up with this kid? What's up with this person? 
and they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's cool. He's so-and-so. Like, okay, cool. I'll add him. All right. Mm-hmm. Strange times we live in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's sad that he has to live like that, right? Even to this day, like, what is it, like 40 years later, 50 years later, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He still has to live like that because they're still constantly trying to retaliate against him. He just, he just now got the Medal of Honor for what he did. Wow. Just like... So maybe like will, yeah, you know what? Like two let, weeks ago, or something let, like that. let's rewind a bit. Let's rewind a bit because I know a lot of people are coming in this, and they're going, "Wait, what the fuck is all this?" <laughs> and and let's let's just rewind a little. Let's go. Let's go to Steve Lee, the undercover cop. Let's let's start from there. Like, what okay. happened? What did you whistle? Because they, they're listening to some. They may not be hip to Steve Lee's past or or uh, Frank Serpico, right? Right. Yeah. They're they're coming in this very very new. And fresh to and people, this and people story. might not even know who said Frank Sinatra. They haven't so. seen this movie yeah. or, or you know yet. So um, let's let's start there. 